Hello everyone and welcome back to Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2. This is episode 2. Last time we begun the playthrough we started the game drifting in space aboard the Ebon Hawk where we have now been able to, thanks to the help of T3, direct the Ebon Hawk to land safely on the Paragus mining facility. It's been a few days, everyone's dead. <laughs> or gone and we're trying to figure out what the hell happened here while also getting off of this facility uh so the ebon hawk has been repaired by the mining facility droids we don't know who asked them to do that or why uh but we're figuring it out as we're here so we're continuing where we left off where we've met uh, a couple of new faces and we're piecing together this story the last thing that we did is we had t3 open up the paragus mining tunnels so we're heading down there now on our own to uh to continue with the playthrough uh, but great first impressions so far as always i mean i loved the first game it's going to be very easy for me to going to be very easy for me to love and appreciate the second one as well at least right at the beginning so feeling good about it uh we got our com link from uh our friend here he's like can you read me so i guess he'll just pop in here and there for some unprompted dialogue um <laughs> yes for a minute i thought you and Creo were telepathic because he doesn't know who that person is yet so <laughs> stay off the com link i don't want you contacting me while i'm down here uh, we'll just say barely. There's a lot of static. There's a lot of interference down there. Probably caused by that explosion. Still, it looks like there's a route down to the Paragus fuel depot. If the passages haven't collapsed, that explosion knocked out most of the sensors. There should be an emergency crate in the next room. Watch yourself. There's a lot of droid broadcasts in that area, but I can't pin them down. Okay. Alert me immediately if you pick up anything else. Will do. And be careful now. Alrighty, so he'll pop in if anything else happens. Okay, let's open up the plasteel cylinder. Yeah, we have clothes! <laughs> the minor uniform. Alright, there we go. We have clothes. Yes, and it looks like there's some clothes in here. About time. The whole half-naked Jedi thing was wearing a little thin. But there may be some survey gear and a safety harness inside the crate too. The miners wear them when staking claims on the asteroids. The survey gear is designed to spot and protect you against sonic mines, and the safety harness can be helpful if you try to disarm them. Nice. Okay. There's some kind of mining energy shield in this crate, too. Yeah, it's like a military-issue energy shield, except it's designed to protect the miners against lasers and heat. It should work against the droid mining lasers. It won't last forever, and certainly not against multiple laser hits, but it may buy you some time if you get ambushed by a battalion of droids. Nice. Uh, sounds useful. How do I use it? Just equip it on your wrist, and then you can activate it like a med pack. Again, it won't last forever, so make it count. Nice. Uh, understood. Anything else? Uh, just one more thing. I've narrowed down some of the ID signals, and if the numbers are right, you're sharing those tunnels with a battalion of mining droids. Perfect. Um, I don't have any stealth points yet, so we'll probably just take them on, get that XP. Uh, any advice on taking out these droids? Well, these are construction models. They shoot like a moisture farmer militia. Since they rely on ranged weapons, get in close with a melee weapon and start bashing them. In close combat, the guy with the vibro blade has the edge over the guy with the rifle, droid or not. Otherwise, just drill them from a distance. If they're not shielded, that is. Nice. Good idea. Shielded? Yeah, it's possible some of the droid models may have mining shields on. If so, the shields may absorb laser fire. You can usually tell when a shield is active. It'll make an electrical field around the target. If they activate a shield, the best thing you can do is hit them with a melee weapon or try to burn out the shield with continual fire. But that could take a while, and it leaves you a target. Okay, I'll do that. Anything else? There's gotta be some central controller down there. See if you can find a terminal by the main access shaft. That'd be governing intelligence. Okay, nice. So, we'll go to this, and we'll switch weapons, so we'll put the Vibra Cutter, uh, we'll put the Vibra Cutter back on instead of the Mining Laser, and instead of Stealth Field Generator, we'll do the Safety Harness. Demolitions plus one. This Paragus Mining Safety Harness is designed to aid a miner in setting and removing demolition charges within asteroid mining claims. Um, the Miner Uniform. 
standard uniform worn by miners at the Paragus facility provides minimal protection, but it can be upgraded with some underlays. Um, and now we can chuck on our shields. So the energy shield, of obviously for energy and electrical, 40 points, and the mining shield is for heat. So we'll stick on an energy shield primarily, and then the mining shield on the second one. We've got survey gear and neural band. Will plus two. Developed after the Exile Kun War, bolsters the willpower of the user by electrically reinforcing established mental patterns. Republic troops called it Little Shocky. <laughs> uh, and now we've got the survey gear. When surveying new asteroid claims, uh, this headgear is designed to help identify both pockets of Paragian gas and any placed thermal charges in the area. So awareness plus one. So we'll chuck that bad boy on. And then I think we're good. All right. I like the I like the new setup for the screen. It's pretty sweet. There we go. We got clothes. We got our headpiece as well. Always got to have your neural band and our vibro blade. All right, let's move on. We're no longer naked in our jumpsuit and red sneakers. God, the environments look really nice. We got our first droid down here. Oh no, it's damaged. So this is our repair skill to have it with us. How many repair parts we got? Four. I will leave it alone for now. I think I'll be okay on my own. Let's just choose this direction first. We'll head in it and see what happens. Let's go. Oh god. Well, the one that I targeted popped the shield, so that's funny. Nice. Oh, you missed. I like the dodge. There you go, nice. Keep going, boy. Nice. I think one of my... Uh, one of the things that I really enjoy about starting this sequel is obviously I have much more of an understanding of the game systems now. Like, I know that we have, like, one to nine damage. We got a plus one to hit. Like, I... And I can have a bit more of an understanding about, like, what's actually going on. The, the beginning of Knights of the Old Republic 1 was a little bit rocky until we found, like, that comfortable period where we were getting more of an understanding about how everything was working. Um, and now things are really nice, which is, which is good. All right, let's go and attack this bad boy. So we're hitting the ground running uh, in comparison to the first game, which is nice. All right. Corpse. No, I'm in combat. There we go. Credits, credits, and an advanced mining laser. Sweet. Um, there's a group of them. Let's kill this one first. Ooh, there's a bigger one over there. Oh, it just got repaired. Oh, shit. Hang on a minute. Excavator droid. Maintenance droid. I was going to use an ion grenade on that group over there, but maybe if I chuck the ion grenade here, it might get rid of all of those. Okay, hang on. Use the... I want to... Actually, let's just attack this one and see what happens. Go for this guy. Why? Go, go for this guy, please. You, okay. Why won't... Please go for this guy. You got this. I believe in you. Alright, maybe I should... Maybe I'm fucking myself up here. Hang on. Let's do... Um, i got to heal myself first. There we go, we got the repair droid. I was going to switch to a mining laser so I could shoot it from a distance, but it blew up, so we're fine. Uh, now, I wanted to use an iron grenade on this group. I don't know the range. Okay, we got two. That's fine. We got two of them. And we can level up. Oh yeah. Um, level up. Okay. To level up some skills, can put another point in repair. Oh, but it costs two points, doesn't it? Because it's not a class skill. All right. Fin 
I'm gonna need to put I need to put some points into my stealth. So I'm gonna do that. I think when I can, I'm gonna change and when I can add a feat, I'm gonna make repair a class skill. We can do that now. It's tough because obviously I'm gonna wanna do some other things. I think it's better to do it earlier. So we're gonna do we're gonna make repair a class skill. Um so now it won't cost more to do it. And then we'll be able to focus on doing some melee finesse and uh, like melee abilities and stuff. Another force ability. Ooh, actually it might go for stun droid while we're here. We'll focus on we got a lot of droids. And we, we, we sure as hell know we're going to be battling a lot of droids through this game, so I'm going to eventually go through to destroy droid. I'll add stun droid while we're here. Wonderful, we got our first actual force power to use in combat. Hey, Gamorian gauntlets. Sorry, Gamorian gauntlets. We're going to do this again, pronunciation of Gamorian. Um, Gamorian gauntlets. Physical damage plus four, and attack modifier minus one when unarmed. These brutish gloves are heavy and clumsy. When used in unarmed combat, they allow for powerful but less accurate blows. Uh, they have no practical effect when wielding a weapon. Oh. They have no practical effect when wielding a weapon. So these are... Instead of them being like an increase on strength, you want to you you'll be more powerful with your fists, but less accurate. Okay. I guess we'll just we'll just chuck it on and we can try it sometime. But obviously, I'm pretty happy with the vibra blade right now. Um, can I can I? I don't know if I can do anything with those. So we're just we're just picking a direction at the moment and running with it. We'll see how we go. Okay. Oh. Hey, watch out! That doesn't that look good. That explosion has superheated the tunnels ahead. That steam will cook the skin off your bones. If you can find a mining energy shield, switch it on. It should protect you against the heat if you move quickly enough. Oh, I love the I, I love the concept and the idea of having. Because you have energy shields during the first game, but not really in situations where you need to use it for the environment much. So this is actually really, really neat that you've obviously got one that's resistant to heat and you can actually make use of that uh, and use it to navigate the environment. I like that a lot. Um, understood. Chris Blythe out. All right. Uh, the Paragus Mining Shield. Run! Da -da -da. I just started taking damage, I think. Ugh. Watch where you step. I'm picking up a lot of sonic mines down there. Don't run unless you have to. It makes them harder to spot. If you have any skill with demolitions, you might be able to recover them and use them against the droids. That is, if the mines don't get you first. If you have survey gear or a safety harness, put them on. They'll make spotting and disarming the sonic charges a little easier. Oh, we've, we're on a black screen. Uh, why are there so many charges down here? Those mining droids, especially the excavator models, are designed to arm and set sonic charges for mining. Chances are if they still had charges after they went rogue, then they may have set them to try and kill the miners. And you. If you see one of those excavators, watch out. They may use their undeployed charges as projectiles. Okay, understood. Now, I can use stun droid on the sonic mine, apparently. Uh, let me just take a quick look at my skills. Demolitions is zero. <laughs> but uh, wearing the safety harness gives me a plus one. So it's currently at a one. I can't even interact with it. What does stun droid do on... Left click the mouse to activate a hostile force power selected in the single icon, second icon on target menu. Oh, I can do stun droid to set the mines off from a distance. That's kind of cool. But unfortunately, I don't have the demolition skill required to deal with them. I could... There you go. All right, well. Oh, wrong, wrong one. I meant to use it on this guy. Yeah, nice. 
It worked. That's awesome. I wonder if they can... Okay, they can't set off their own mines, naturally. Cool. Alright, my force powers are already used. <laughs> but it's gonna... They're gonna come in handy. Okay. Why are you running? Okay, yep. Sure. Run around the long way for some reason. You got it, bud. <laughs> Just automatically run through the long way. Is that really a critical strike? Damn. There you go. That's better. Okay, broken droid. Components and a sonic grenade. Okay, my force power does come back ever so slowly. Ah, oh, right, hang on. Uh, what I might do is... I'll just chuck on this mining laser real quick. So, what I can do is press H to switch weapons. I can't queue up. Okay. While I'm switching weapons, I can't queue up the ability to do any attacks. And then destroy destroy the maintenance droid. Oh, good shot on the maintenance droid there. All right, trying to see if I can get the maintenance droid defeated. It's really just shooting very straight. I'm gonna get killed by the. Come on. Oh, it did some damage. There we go. Okay. God, that was close. <laughs> Alright, switch weapons back. Honestly, I think it's still better for me to just use the sword and run after the maintenance droid and attack it that way. I think it's the main ventilation shaft. If so, the central droid controller should be somewhere nearby. Keep an eye out for it. Damn. These environments are so cool. If you still have a mining energy shield, I'd equip it and switch it on. Yeah, these environments are so cool. Uh, there aren't just ma mining droids down here, there are sensor balls too. Sensor? It must be maintenance drones. Uh, watch out. Those little pests will try to repair the mining droids if you don't gun them down first. Still, it's odd they're still active after the explosion. They don't have the same shielding as the mining droids. Be careful of those droids. I don't like this. Interesting. Um, understood. Are we being watched by one? Like a, like, Darth Maul's probe droid type deal. We're being watched. Okay, let's take out these droids. We could stealth them, but... Attack! Nice. They're, they're weak enough. Alright, so there's a bunch of them behind the shields as well. Just keep using flurry. Get flurried. Check the corpse. Okay, credits and a med pack. Central controller. Oh, it's locked. Oh, never mind. Security tunneler. All right, bunch of cool stuff. Central. Eh. Please look at the right thing. All right. Praga Central Mining Control. Emergency lockdown activated. Explosions reported in fuel chambers. Okay, so we un unlock emergency supply cylinder. Ah, we just lock. We just opened it. That's fine. We don't need that. Call up droid command functions. So we only have one computer spike, so we can't do any of these. Add other droids to mining protocols. Cancel. Reassign. Okay. Check the droid schematics. 
It looks like a mess to you. It's hard separating what's a circuit and what's a connecting feed. You close the schematics. <laughs> uh, return to main functions. Fuel containment functions. Uh, shut down containment fields. There we go. Take on some droids. Shuts down all of them at once. Camera functions. Emergency hatch to administration. Okay. Emergency hatch to fuel depot. Nice. Um, unidentified hollow record camera. Work claim 1234. Hollow sequence recorded. Playback initiated. Everybody here? What's up, Kurda? We're supposed to be sinking fuel siphons into the 3218 asteroid shelf right now. Forget the siphons. You know that survivor they pulled from the freighter? One of the miners said they served with him on Malachor 5. Malachor 5? So he's one of the survivors. Or worse, a Mandalorian. So what? Not a survivor, idiot. He's one of the Jedi from Malachor 5. If he's one of the Jedi, hell, we can't have him walking around here. He'll... I don't know what he'll do. I thought all the Jedi were wiped out in the Civil War, weren't they? Guess they missed one. But it gets better. I did some checking, and that bounty on Nashada is still alive. Nashada! You want to sell the Jedi to the Exchange? Kurda, have you been chewing spice? Oh. You know how big that bounty is? That Jedi's our ticket off this rock. Kurda, there's no way the officers will go for that. They'll lock us up for sure. Then we'll improvise. Someone has taken care to delete the record of this camera being placed. It is not listed on any of the work records. So, Jedi's from, uh, we're from Malachor 5. And someone knows us. Someone served with us in the Mandalorian Wars. Um, also, Narshadar. Oh, I've been waiting to get Narshadar in live action for so long, and we still haven't got it. We just keep getting new planet after new planet after new planet instead of these lovely planets that we've gotten, like, in games or in other media that would love... It just, like, it would be perfect for a live action representation. We haven't got it yet. Uh, but that's interesting. All right, return to main functions. Let's log out. Time to go attack some droids. Get some experience, baby. There you go. Nice. It's nice feeling so much more capable in combat uh, at the start of this game in comparison to the start of um, to the start of the first game. <laughs> feel much more capable. Now, it looks like we have to go down that way, so we'll take on these droids here first. Flurry is probably my best bet out of these abilities, I think. Flurry is good. As soon as I said that, I did no damage with it. I jinxed it. There we go. Yeah, this is this controls really well on PC. I really like how this plays on, on PC. Which is very nice. I think games that have the convenience of pointing to things and choosing options with a cursor is very nice in comparison to a controller. Looks like we can go down there as well. Broken droid. Some items. Okay, door is sealed. There is something on the map on the other side, but it's not for us to open yet. About down here. Where are you running off to, buddy? You know, match for my flurry! Okay, now, this curves around, whoa, hang on, uh, I think it just did a comlink scene, because it's taken us immediately to dialogue, but we weren't able to even, I just said, what kind of readings were you talking about, 
Trust me, whatever you've detected is probably my fault. I would just say, what are you talking about? Because I don't know, genuinely. The, <laughs> the mining tunnels are shutting down. You need to get out of there before they vent fuel to the surface of the asteroid through the tunnels. Oh, how much time do I have? I may be able to keep it contained until you get the turbo lift to the fuel depot, but not for much longer. I'm locking down the turbo lift to the administration section now to keep the blast from spreading. If you've got anything left to do down there, make it quick, because where you are is going to get real hot real soon. Okay. Um, okay, this will curve around into a room. <laughs> quick, before you get healed! Damn it! I was like, quick, before you get healed by the fucking droid! Nice, okay, now. Uh, maintenance droid. Stun droid. Ah, he saved it. There we go. Uh, be careful. Just trying not to walk into the mines right now. There you go. Perfect. I think this... I wonder if this is the, where we're supposed to be going this way. It seems like it might be the direction we're supposed to go, but I'm not sure. Considering it triggered a cutscene on the com link, I'm thinking... I'm thinking maybe. I'm thinking maybe. Uh, so let's quickly avoid these mines. So before we go down there... So many drugs. High security door. Probably not gonna be able to get through this one. Security failure. Just keep trying until we get in there. All right. Oh, it actually worked. There you go. Third try. Third time's the charm. I was gonna use a security tunneler if it kept failing. Okay. Broken droid. Getting items. Okay. I'm just seeing how big this place really is. Ah, oh, that's where we came from, that one there, I think. Okay, so... We came through there, we did this. That's where we were going. Where's that? Turbo lift to administration, which has been sealed. Central mining core, superheated blast tunnel. So I think we went through there, and then we went all the way around there. Yes, so that's where we're supposed to be going. Gotcha. Uh, this does take us somewhere as well. Okay, getting a bunch of items from the droids, which is nice. Alright, let's see if I'm good at dodging these mines. There you go, you can just go around them. Damn! Heavy mining laser, cardio regulator, basic ionite edge. Bunch of stuff. Hang on, let's have a look at this. Okay, basic ionite edge. It's a melee item. Does ion damage. Ionite ally produces the inverse charge of its surroundings, creating a disrupting effect to electronic systems. The modifications require a workbench, so it's an upgrade item. That's cool. Interesting. Okay, so I like how the new items are at least highlighted in orange, so it does make things stand out. There you go. Alright, so there's a hidden hidden dude in a mining shaft with some, with some cool items. Sweet. And now we go back the way that we're supposed to, but we need to get out of here quickly. Because it's about to get real hard. Real quick. Alright, we're getting a lot of energy shields, which is nice. But considering we're fighting in close combat anyway, and the droids start hitting us on the head, probably not even worth activating at this point. Come on, get him. Get him. Get him. Oh, that's got some range on it, that flamethrower. Are we stunning him or not? Force depleted. Just... Okay. 
they're blocking the path. Get him. Get this maintenance droid. I'm gonna continue missing the maintenance droid. You can do it, I believe in you. There we go. I like how the explosion damages the other droids. Take that! Have at ye! Stop burning me. No misses, please. God damn, God damn it! What are you doing? Stop missing! So many misses. Okay. Some remains. There we go. Alright, I think this is our way out of here. The turbo lift. So this will take us to the fuel depot? Yes. To the Paragus fuel depot. So we're gonna go find T3 here, I guess. See what happened to him. <laughs> nice. Oh, it's the dude from the, uh... It's the dude on the recording. Goggles. Mr. Goggles. Greeting. It is a pleasure to see you alive, Master. Provided my receptors are not off focus. How may I be of assistance? Dude. Dude. He's a different color, though. It might not be HK. See, I didn't know in that first scene where he walked out. I noticed that he was like a like a smoky color, but I didn't know if that was like the fact that it, it was the environment. It might have been carbon scoring, anything like that. But now that he's actually in a new environment, he's a different color. Provided my receptors are not off focus. Okay, is it HK? How do you know me? I'm not your master. Tell me what you're doing. What are you? Have you seen a T3 unit? What's that body? Um, what are you? Proud answer. I am an HK series protocol droid master, skilled in transorganic relations and communications. This month has been responsible for the facilitation of communications and termination of hostilities across the galaxy. I am fluent in over 6,000 forms of communication and am also capable of nuances of expression ranging from irony to veiled threats. Irony to veiled threats. Okay. I love how he does his C-3PO introduction. He's like, I am fluent in over 6 million forms of communication, but also capable of this. Okay. Uh, what's a translation droid doing on Paragus? Irritated explanation. That question has been looping through my query module with alarming frequency, Master, and no satisfactory answer has been forthcoming. As a result... I have chosen instead to turn my efforts to answering the question as to how I may depart this drifting disaster area as quickly as possible. I love that he... Uh, I love that it has that sort of same approach that an Elcor does to, like, when they go to... When Elcor in Mass Effect go to speak, they always have to go, Genuine query, and, like, because they're so uh, monotone, they have to actually communicate their genuine intent. So I just love that he's like, <clears throat> how he communicates like that as well. Uh, what have you determined? Answer. It is only a matter of time before a ship or freighter docks with the Paragus facility. When that occurs, we shall depart this place forever. Uh, wait all you want, but I'm getting out of here on my own, and I never said you were coming with me. Oh. I don't like either of those options. I'm going to say number two. Placating retraction. Oh, of course, Master. Please excuse my choice of words. I did not mean to imply that you would have no choice in the matter. Okay. Uh, I had some more questions for you. Of course, Master. How may I be of assistance? I like the, the chrome, like the silver chrome color scheme uh, more than the red. Um, I'm just going to, I guess we'll say, how do you know me? I'm not your master. Answer. I am a survivor of the Harbinger, just as you were master. With the unexpected termination of my previous master, you are the only organic which I may now serve. Revan's not dead, is he? 
The unexpected termination of my previous master. Who was your previous master? Answer, the captain of the Harbinger, master. I was in transit to Telos to facilitate communications and terminate hostilities. However, we did not arrive at our intended destination. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that this might not be HK forty seven. Considering the difference in coloration, unless he's gone through, you know, C-3PO changed colors through movies sometimes, depending on what happened. It's been a few years. Unless Revan was the captain of the Harbinger, potentially. I don't think he would be, though, because this character was in exile and he was on the Harbinger and he didn't even know about what had happened except with rumors. All right. He hasn't given us a name yet. He's just said he's a HK protocol droid. I guess we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. Until we get an actual introduction to his actual ID number, his operating number, I don't know if he's if he's HK or not. But now we're his master. Um, what happened? Irritated answer. Oh, Master, it is such a long, dull story, and not terribly relevant to our current situation. When hate when the HK series of droid is so popular that they need to just make sure that there's another one in the party. <laughs> uh, why don't you tell me anyway? Hesitant explanation. That has been the subject of considerable discussion since our arrival here, Master. Many have attempted to claim you and this unit as salvage. I was crudely interrogated concerning our brief history together on board the Harbinger, before its communications, weapons, and engines suffered the cascade failure that disabled the ship. Okay. Um... How come I don't remember any of this? Speculation. It is possible you were incapacitated and locked in the well-shielded cargo compartment as the Harbinger was being systematically crippled, Master. Incapacitated? Clarification. Yes, Master. No doubt the flurry of destruction on board the Harbinger somehow drugged you into a stupor from which you could not awaken. Most curious. Hmm. Maybe you better explain the stupor part. Placation. Merely a turn of phrase, Master. The implication that your state was due to the result of ingesting large quantities of Juma juice was unintentional. I meant to communicate only that you were somehow rendered unconscious before you were locked securely in the cargo hold. Uh, locked? So I wasn't sealed in the cargo hold, someone locked me in. Clarification by locked. I meant sealed, Master. My vocabulator seems to be malfunctioning. <laughs> okay. Um, fine, what happened next? Recitation. Recitation. <laughs> the unusual set of coincidences that led to the cascade failure in the Harbinger's systems. We were boarded by a small freighter with unknown ID codes. It appeared that this freighter had been attacked and the captain wanted to study it. This freighter appeared to be still spaceworthy. Your cargo compartment was breached, and you were taken on board the freighter shortly before the Harbinger systems began to go critical. I, too, managed to board the freighter before the Harbinger's destruction. We were most fortunate to have survived, Master. Hmm. So... Ah... So there's just this weird, there's just going to be this weird mystery surrounding the events of how we got from point A to point B. Any idea what it attacked the small freighter? Evaluation. Master, I do not know. Judging from the damage, it had been attacked by a much larger vessel. And when it attempted to escape the Harbinger with you on board, it was fired on again. Addendum. It does seem odd that such a small vessel has a high probability of attracting the attention of much larger vessels. Not a welcome trait in a freighter, to be sure. Uh, what was this freighter that the Harbinger brought on board? Well, I'm assuming it's the Evan Hawk, right? Explanation. I believe it was a smuggler's vessel by the name of the Ebon Hawk. Speculation. As to its purpose, 
I do not know. Perhaps it was always its intention to play dead, then kidnap you off the Harbinger and rob me of my bounty. Uh, rob me of my bounty? Clarification. By bounty, I refer to your life, Master. It would pain me to see you damaged in any way. That is why the arrival of this Ebon Hawk caused me considerable distress. Why does he refer to me as Bounty, though? Hmm. And the Ebon Hawk... Okay. But why would that ship have taken me off the Harbinger? Apology. My memory core cannot provide a clear answer on that point, Master. Suffice to say that once we arrived at this floating rock, our situation became much clearer. How so? Explanation. Despite my market value, Master, the miners were far more interested in you. It did not take long for me to ascertain the reason for this. While an HK protocol droid is a valuable piece of property, Jedi are worth much more in certain exclusive markets across the galaxy. Painful admission. I must confess to feelings of inferiority at the speculated difference between my value and the price for your capture. I was forced to remind myself it was not due to a failing of my model or function, but because you were a Jedi. Okay. How did they find out I was a Jedi? Surprised answer. Why, I told them, Master. You are the exiled Jedi who served with Revan in the Mandalorian Wars, are you not? I hope all that has happened has not been the result of a miscommunication. If so, then the problem lies with the core word databases, which are notoriously spotty. Hmm, so yeah, Malakor 5, so we served in the Mandalorian Wars alongside Revan. Very, very cool. Okay. Um... That information wouldn't have been in Core Ward databases, only in Jedi Archives. Indignant exclamation. Master, I am only a protocol droid, but it is part of my function to know such information and relay it to any interested parties in the interests of terminating any potential hostiles. Okay, potential hostiles? Quick clarification. Apparently my vocabulator has suffered some damage, Master. I meant terminating any potential hostilities. Hmm, I see. Go on. Answer. All that has happened has been because they believe you to be a Jedi, Master. They debated what to do with you as you lay unconscious in the medical bay. One group seemed intent on selling you as property. The other group opposed this. Hmm, then what happened? Three standard hours after the division between the miners became apparent, accidents began to occur throughout the facility. A result of improper maintenance, I believe. These accidents coincided with the degradation of the mining droid behavioral cores. Crude models are prone to such failures, resulting in murderous rampages. The mortality rate of organics in the facility rose quickly. Okay, so what happened to the rest of the miners? Many miners began to join you in the medical bay as a cascade of flawlessly timed detonations occurred in isolated gas pockets in the lower levels of the facility. The explosions herded the miners into emergency sections of the station quickly and efficiently, cutting them off from communications and facility control. But sadly enough, not the ventilation systems. Sadly enough? What do you mean? You see, the explosions had damaged specific sections of this facility's ventilation systems, causing a slow, lethal buildup of toxic fumes in the dormitory level. Okay. <laughs> Are you responsible for all this? Defensive answer. Master, I am a protocol droid, not a well-crafted assassination droid of unrivaled sophistication. To have carried out the actions that took place here would have required an unusual set of skills. It is highly unlikely I possess the knowledge of how to reprogram the memory cores of base worker class droids into killing machines, let alone to terminate the organics at this facility, utilizing only Aerotech 500 series laser mining drills and explosives fashioned from proton missile cores. 
I think you are responsible. Admission. I cannot and will not attempt to change your mind, Master. I would urge you to consider that your Colto tank treatments may have caused some disorientation. Hmm. Okay. Do you do you know who administered sedatives in the to the Colto tanks in the medical bay, killing the incapacitated miners? Conjecture. The administration of a large dose of sedatives over a short period of time would likely prove fatal to miners, although not to a Jedi. For a Jedi, it would simply render them unconscious for ease of transport. Quite inventive. Is that pride I hear in your voice? Hmm. Okay. I've got some thoughts. We'll see how this plays out. This is this seems very suspicious. Inventive, those miners were murdered. I'm gonna say is that pride I hear in your voice. Answer. I was merely commenting on the idea itself, Master, not the execution of the idea. Though that too was inventive. Besides, Master, those miners intended to murder you. Or worse. Any complaints they would have at being murdered would be the highest form of hypocrisy. Okay, I had some more questions for you. Of course, Master. How may I be of assistance? Okay. Have you seen a T3 unit? Hesitant answer. Ah, a T3 utility droid would be a common sight in this facility. It is indeed curious that I have not seen many since my arrival. However, I feel I must inform you that, droid prejudice aside, T3 models exhibit excessive individualism when not routinely memory wiped. This individualism can become such a nuisance that even a droid such as myself is tempted to reduce them to their base components, if not crush them into slag. But enough of my seemingly irrelevant tangent. Where did you leave the droid, Master? That would logically be the best place to look. Interesting. Well, he did reduce one to scrap, I'm pretty sure. It was it was him doing so. The unit was last seen near the hangar. Answer. Ah. Then that would explain why such a T3 unit isn't here, Master. I believe my photoreceptors are functioning adequately enough to verify that. But maybe you can answer something else for me. Of course, Master. How may I be of assistance? Okay. Um, I'm looking for a way into the Paragus hangar bay. Pitying answer. Oh, that is unfortunate, Master. The hangar is sealed behind a containment field. It would be impossible to open it. What about override codes? Answer. Only the Paragus administration officer would have such codes, Master. If he hasn't already been murdered in an unfortunate accident, then he is trapped in the dormitory section, which has been effectively cut off from the facility by explosives. <laughs> is it possible to contact him using a comlink? Apology. Unfortunately, communication with the dormitory section is severed, Master. It is perhaps for the best, especially if any other accidents have occurred in that section. If that were the case, the severed comm link would have spared us the satisfaction of hearing the miners' screams as they lived out their last moments in fear and terror. There must be another way. And also, satisfaction. Rapid retraction. Why, yes, satisfaction in knowing their fate, Master. It would be unfortunate if they had been slaughtered. But there would be a calm, comforting certainty that there is nothing we can do to escape until a ship arrives. Rapid retraction. Okay. Uh, we don't know what happened to them, so we need to find out. Theory. You could walk across the surface of the asteroid to the dormitory airlock, but such a route would be extremely hazardous, and I do not wish to see you damaged. Those miners could be hurt in danger. We need to make sure that they're all right. Warning. Master, continued exploration of this facility may place you in unnecessary danger. 
I encourage you to return to the medical bay and wait for retrieval from a vessel that is no doubt on the way, even as we continue this pointless conversation. How I'm currently piecing this together is it feels like we are the captured bounty of this droid or potentially we were captured aboard the harbinger incapacitated in the cargo hold uh of which we were referred to as a bounty and that we didn't want any he doesn't want any harm to come to us because we're more valuable alive than dead and then the ebon hawk with this kraya woman somehow in possession of the ebon hawk um who seems Jedi-like in nature, has come to rescue us while our ship was get attacked or being damaged uh, by something else along the way. We got rescued. The droid, HK droid, was able to, you know, get aboard the ship but was shut inside the cupboard, you know, the storage compartment, trying to, trying to get out. And the first thing it did once it got out is it killed one of the other droids. That's how I... That's the suspicion that I have right now by following along with this conversation is it feels like I was captured only to be with this guy at the moment where he's just trying... He's, like, playing with me. Where it's like, we do not wish any harm to come to you. Like, you are my master. We'll see. We'll see. That's how... It, that's what it feels like right now. Um, I'm going to find those miners and you're going to help me. Weary resignation. Very well, Master, but there is very little that I can do. You see, the airlock is sealed by a code. All right. Uh, <laughs> this just keeps getting better and better. Who's got the damn code? Correction. Oh, I already possess the code, Master, but I am afraid that it will do you no good. Uh, what do you mean? Condescending explanation. Master, the console governing the droid maintenance area and the airlock is voice printed, musing. In the last days of his life, the maintenance officer was quite careful about voice protocols bordering on paranoid obsession. Conjecture. I suspect once he realized something was wrong in the facility, he voice locked the droid bay functions. A prudent measure, but in the end, he met the same fate as the rest of the organics. Interesting. Well, we do have a security record recording of him and his voice in one of the rooms. Voice printed. Explanation. Yes, Master. Many consoles have voice recognition sensors built into their systems so that only selected individuals can unlock them. But you said you said you already have the code. Condescending explanation. Oh yes, Master. The code is maintenance control voice print ID R1 B5. But unless the maintenance officer speaks the code, it is useless. Okay. Leave condescending out of your speech conditionals from now on, or else. <laughs> nah, I love it. It's funny. Uh, then how can I bypass the void print? Master, you cannot. You are trapped here just as I am. There is nothing to do except patiently wait for whatever the future has in store for us. The way that he says that, you know, because he's like, oh, our ship's going to arrive and then we'll get out of here. You know, which makes me feel like there's someone or something already on the way, potentially, to come and pick up HK and his bounty, potentially. I had some more questions for you. Of course, Master. How may I be of assistance? Okay. Um, let's have a look at... What's that body there? Answer. That is all that remains of the maintenance officer, Master. At the end. He was quite incoherent from the pain, and attempts to facilitate communications with him proved useless. I heard his dying screams as the droids he tended turned on him, mining him like a piece of asteroid rock. Screams? Recitation. Oh yes, Master. 
The record of his last moments were... Five droids, burning through the outer door. They're, they're forcing their way into the bay. Please, some with it! Oh, oh no, they're, they're through! Oh, my leg! They're burning through my leg! Oh, stop! Stop, please! Addendum. His remaining attempts at communication are variations in Decibel Master, <laughs> ranging from frenzied screams to gibbering inarticulate attempts to beg for his life. Jesus. I was literally just about to say this. Wait, if you can play back his voice, can you speak the voice code? Like, can you adjust the voice modulator? Objection. Master, to commit such an act would be in violation of the ethics programming most droids are believed to possess. I am believed to possess. There is nothing that can be done. Most droids are believed to possess. We can persuade... I understand if your limited functionality prevents you from mimicking the maintenance officer's voice accurately, or the fact that you can mimic voices are pretty impressive. What would it sound like if you did speak the code to the console? I'm going to do number three. I want to play with his ego. I understand if your limited functionality prevents you from mimicking the maintenance officer's voice accurately. Irritated objection. Master, there is nothing wrong with my communications functionality. I will prove it. A recitation. Maintenance control voice print ID R1B5. There. Was that sufficient, Master? Can you follow me and say that again? Alarmed objection. Oh, Master, no. I might inadvertently speak such a command near a console and accidentally unlock something I shouldn't. I was merely speaking such to prove to you that I could. It is a trait I'm quite proud of. Oh, you stubborn droid, I love you. Looks like I'll need to find some way to carry your voice there, or record it. Confused query. I am sorry, Master. Were you speaking to yourself? Tell me again about the voice print protocol. Condescending explanation. Master, the console governing the droid maintenance area and the airlock is voice printed. Musing. Conjecture. Okay. Um, let me just run through this because I already know about all of this. Objection. So then if I say, the fact that you can mimic voice is pretty impressive, what would it sound like if you did speak the code to the console? Proud answer. Master, I believe my vocabulator is working adequately enough to accommodate your request. A recitation. Maintenance control voice print ID R1B5. There. Was that sufficient, Master? Alright, I need to figure out how to get this recorded. <laughs> uh, I had some other questions I wanted to ask you. Of course, Master. Okay. Um, so we've asked about the body. Uh, we've asked about the hangar bay. Are you sure you haven't seen this? What are you going to... How do you know me? Tell me again. Okay, so we've got everything here. We've spoken to him about everything, so I'll just say I'll be going now. Okay, let's have a look in the journey. So it just says HK Protocol Droid. Just says HK Protocol Droid. Para Paragus 2. The only exit from this level is through an airlock sealed with a voice print protocol. The HK unit knows the code, but the owner of the voice, the maintenance officer, is dead. You need some way of recording his voice and then playing it back to unlock the voice print on the airlock terminal. Maybe Atta knows of a way. Okay, the HK Protocol Droid told you to force field to the hangar bay is impossible to open. I'll need to spacewalk across the asteroid to reach the dormitory airlock. And in recent history, the HK unit you encountered in the Paragus Field Depot suggested you were incapacitated and taken off the Harbinger on a freighter called the Ebon Hawk. Apparently the Ebon Hawk had been picked up by the Harbinger not long before your kidnapping and it looks like it had been in a battle. As the Ebon Hawk attempted to leave the Harbinger, the Harbinger fired upon it and the freighter barely managed to make its way to Paragus. Mm. Interesting. So the Harbinger fired upon us when leaving. We'll, have, we'll piece this one together. We'll piece this one together. So we'll find a way, uh, I don't know if there is a way for me to, uh, like, is there a way for me to use the comm link myself? Can I, this is not a usable or equipable item, so I can't use the comm link. 
so I don't know if there's a way for me to initiate dialogue with Atom myself. I think I might have to uh, wait until he contacts me and then I can ask him. Now, to be able to make certain things, fuck, to be able to even make a computer spike, I need computer use one. No, I need computer use five. Damn. Well, we're not doing that. But we can make a long sword as well. Fibro sword needs repaired 10. Damn. We can make a bunch of armor upgrades. There's so much there's so many more armor upgrades now than they used to be. That's cool. And then upgrade items. Ooh, energy cells and lenses. Oh, this is cool. Okay, we've got a bunch of stuff. The the crafting has been expanded upon like a lot. Which is really cool actually. Data pad, sonic imprint sensor. With the protocol droid's help, I've finished work on the sonic imprint sensors. I've installed them in the mining droids, but I'm locking up the original here to prevent the other miners from using its ability to record and playback voices to override the droid's voice print protocols. With the protocol droid's help. So HK, yeah, HK helped with all of this. So we now have the original Sonic Emitter. With the Sonic Imprint Sensor, you might be able to record pieces of the maintenance officer's voice from hollow tags, from hollow logs, sorry, and use them to open the airlock door. Well, now that I have it, I just need to get him to speak it again, and it will just come from him directly. It is a pleasure to see you intact, Master. Okay. Greeting. It is a pleasure to see you intact, Master. Okay, so it just says Sonic Sensor. Can you play back the maintenance officer's last words? No, I don't need him to say the last words. I need him to say the voice print. But now it won't let me. Okay. So if I go, what's that body there? Answer. That is all that I heard is... And then... Screams? Recitation. Five droids. Burning through the outer door... They're forcing their way into the bay. Please, someone with it! Oh, oh no, they're, they're through! Oh, my leg! They're burning through my leg! Addendum. God damn. Is remaining attempts at communication. Okay. Then we need to go... Wait, if you can play back his voice, can't you speak the voice code? Objection. Okay, persuade and sonic sensor. There we go. I understand your limited functionality prevents you from uh, mimicking the maintenance of his voice accurately. Irritated objection. A recitation. Maintenance control voice print ID R1B5. There. Was that sufficient, Master? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's all I'll need. Confused query. I am sorry, Master. Were you speaking to yourself? Never mind. I'll be going. There we go. Lovely. With the sonic imprint sensor, you were able to trick the HK unit into playing back the code in the maintenance officer's voice. Now that you have the code, it should be easy to open the airlock. Wonderful. And we have leveled up. So, we can now level up an attribute. Um, of which, I would like to eventually... To be, to be honest with you, I think that we can leave strength a bit lower for now, because it hasn't really come... Uh, we haven't really noticed it being too bad. Uh, so I might actually instead update my intelligence so we can have eventually earn some more points to spend on essential skills. So I'll do that and then repair is now a class skill. So I get to do this. I do not have skill points to increase that skill. Oh yes, there we go. So we put repair at four. Uh, actually, I might put up... Nah, we'll do that. And a new power, so... In terms of new powers that I can do... Battle Meditation is actually quite an interesting one. I might wait. I'll get Battle Meditation when I can, when I have a full party, I think. Also, I didn't, I really didn't capitalize on how useful uh, speed is until towards the end of my playthrough, getting obviously more, you know, more attacks in your turn as well. 
I think we might go for, we will just do a little bit of dark side. I know that because we're going to be more on the light side of things, it'll cost more to use the dark side power, but <laughs> just a little bit of fear, just a little bit of fear. When our first actual, you know, we do force powers that is destroying a droid and then instilling fear in the hearts and minds of our enemies. Just a little bit of, uh, of dark side power as a treat. There you go. Okay. Thank you so much, HK, for your time. Okay, so we've done the sonic imprint. Looks like we can now do the airlock. More mining droids. I was really hoping that we would have, uh, or wondering if we were gonna end up having the droid join our party, but he did not. Do not join our party. No, can, can you... Why won't you target the right person? He goes to target another droid instead. Bam! Droid Impact Armor Mark 1. Uh, damaged door. Whoa, hello. Hello, big boys. Oh god. Uh, stun droid. I'm so glad that we have stun droid. Yeah, that's what we're talking about, baby! Oh, he saved. And now my force powers are gone. Okay, let's... Let's just go for it. Uh, I want to use an eye. Well, actually, let's try the sonic grenade. Nice. Oh, and it damaged the door, too. Low security door. Come on, it's low security. We can do it. Nice. Hell yeah. Oh no, it damaged another droid by the door. Ah, I think that's what the... Did the grenade damage another droid through the door? I think it did. Okay. Huh. Okay. I think the only thing behind here was that droid. That was at the door. Nice. That worked out quite well. Um... Oh god, there's more of them. Oh, and there's a maintenance droid. He needs to stop saving himself. No, attack, attack that one. Why attack, the, attack the? Okay, fucking. I'm not sure what's going on with the with the targeting of this game. Here we go. Just gonna do an iron grenade that saves time. <laughs> I'm going to die. You know what, something that's good that was fixed from the first game, at least, is like, my character doesn't die instantly anymore, which is great. You know how many times Chris Dracor just died? <laughs> just by existing? Too many times. Alright, come on, you got this. Stop missing this droid. Thank you. Like, sometimes I will, I will highlight a droid, pick the ability or attack to use against it, but then it proceeds to keep attacking the droid that it's closest to instead, which is kind of a little bit annoying. Alright, so we've got the maintenance station. Okay, reflex package. Let's have a look, actually. Reflex plus one. Chuck that bad boy on. What's the cardio regulator? Fortitude plus two. I'll just chuck that on because we're not going to do, we're not going to even be turning off any mines with demolition. Okay, this is the maintenance console, so we can now use the sonic sensor. 
Ooh, we can check the system ID signature. The computer matches the console. The computer matches the console signature from where the sedative command was issued that killed all the miners in the medical bay. So I'm pretty sure we can judge by the conversation that we had with HK, considering on how he spoke about it. The order was given from this terminal a few minutes before the emergency lockdown took place. Numerous safety overrides were bypassed under the guise of issuing emergency treatment. Furthermore, it appears two cameras within the medical bay were linked to this terminal, then locked into place. The camera to the morgue and the camera in the room with the Colto tanks. There is no record of who issued these commands, but whoever issued the command have had to have full access to the terminal. So, um, I'm, it seems pretty clear that it would have been HK, as he spoke about it in length when it's like, ah, oh, it allows, you know, the, you know, it would incapacitate a Jedi to make them perfect for transport, you know what I mean? In the same way that we were knocked out on the Harbinger. Um, I want to just do that again. Matches the thing, the order was given a few minutes, furthermore, two cameras, but there's no record of who issued the command, but they had to have full access to the terminal. Okay. Um, maintenance logs. Uh, access log 23310, sonic imprint sensor. Finish the sonic imprint sensor prototype for the mining droids. Everyone knows they need an upgrade. The sensor should allow me to issue voice commands to them rather than manually adjusting their routine each time the mining specifications change. I've been keeping the sensor in the maintenance workshop for the time being. I wanted to test it first by recording and playing back some simple voice commands. Nice. Uh, Ebonhawk droids. Finished my examination of the droids from the Ebonhawk freighter. The T3 unit looked like it had shut itself down. The protocol droid, however, made up for it. It talked my ear off for most of the hour, asking questions about the facility, the personnel, and so on. Still, it wanted to make itself useful, so I put it to work until its master wakes up from the med bay. It seems to have some skills in speaking to droid behavior cores, so... There's been some trouble with some of the mining droids, so I'm signing off. Okay. Uh, Jedi. Been speaking to the protocol droid about the Jedi in Med Bay. I thought they'd all gone away or been killed in the Jedi Civil War. The droid told me that his master is the only Jedi he knows of in all the galaxy, and that the Jedi had served in the Mandalorian Wars almost ten years ago. That would have meant that the Jedi served under Revan for a time. Maybe the Jedi knows what happened to Revan after the end of the Jedi Civil War. Number four, exchange bounty. Been too busy to enter a log for a while. There's been more and more accidents since that Jedi arrived. The miners are starting to get restless, especially Korda. Korda said the exchange is offering a huge bounty on Jedi Knights and that we can make a fortune if we sell the Jedi to Nar Shaddaa. Security shot down that idea pretty quick, but I don't think Korda and his men are gonna give up that easy. I mentioned the trouble to the Jedi's protocol droid. He seemed concerned about his master's safety. I told the droid not to worry. The Korda wouldn't. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sonic Imprint Sensor Update. With the Protocol Droid's help, I made some upgrades to the Sonic Imprint Sensor, using some of the droid's vocabulary subroutines. In addition to its ability to store and record voices, it now has the droid's full array of alien languages, including BASIC. Should prove useful as a portable translator. I tried to make sure the Protocol Unit got some credit for helping fashion it, but the droid refused, saying the work was reward enough. I was thinking of installing the prototype in one of the mining droids as a test, and see what happens. Mm. Uh, sonic sensor access log. Oh. By using the sonic sensor, we can access a voice print ID log. And then there's also security problems. All right, let's get number 15, voice print ID. When the dock officer reported the droids repairing the Ebonhawk, I installed a voice print ID on the droid console system. Someone ordered them to repair that freighter. But I can't find a trace of the order anywhere. If anyone tries that again, they won't be able to do it from this terminal unless I let them. The voice print should cut any user off from the central functions unless I get the code. Ah, uh, so it was, would have also potentially been, was it also HK that gave the repair order as well? By having, you know, the voice print of the dude's, okay. Security problems. The maintenance check on the droids didn't help. If anything, the accidents have increased. Security interrogated me about the droids and they weren't too happy with my answers. I understand it, though. These aren't combat models. They shouldn't even know how to attack. I can't help but think, what if somebody staged the initial trouble with the mining droids just to get them all sent to maintenance, and then did something to them? I think security's right. Someone's trying to sabotage this facility, and they're using the droids to do it. But why? Well, if they could get HK's translation and protocol abilities, 
or like potentially they could also do the co the combat uh, abilities too okay return to main console functions access emergency subroutines check for exits from fuel depot containment field active turbo lift for the administration active emergency turbo lift shut down uh, checked containment field containment field activated breach and fuel lines detected access to hangar bay denied trace the source of the breach the system is registering a blast in one of the main fuel lines. The containment field has been activated to keep the explosion isolated within the hangar bay and fuel lines. Okay, check awareness. That would imply that the fuel lines connect directly to the hangar bay. If you could get access to the fuel lines, you could bypass the containment field entirely, right? And it has like, there's an object in there that we saw on the camera to pick up as well that T3 noticed check fuel lines. Although the fuel lines are currently sealed because no ships are docked within the facility, they would open automatically if a ship did arrive. And HK is, I think, waiting for someone to arrive, it seems, being hinted at. The Ebon Hawk is obviously not in a place that would trigger the fuel lines. Uh, that would mean you would have to board the docked ship and go through the fuel line to reach the hangar, however, which would be an extreme means of gaining access. Check the other exits from the fuel depot. Okay, check turbo lift to administration level. Access to fuel depot denied. Access to administration permitted. Ah, check the other exits. Let's check turbo lift to the mining tunnels. D detonations detected. Venting systems activated. Access denied. Cannot use it to re-enter the tunnels. Uh, check the airlock. Oh, and there's some droids in there. The airlock door has been sealed from the inside as if to present, prevent someone from coming in from the outside. Open door to the airlock. Access denied. Voice print identification required. Strangely enough, this console has been voice printed. Not only does it require a code, but the code has to be spoken in the user's voice. Wow. I wonder if we have that. <laughs> Return to main console functions. <laughs> destroy the console. I wonder what happens if we destroy the console before we could even enter the voice print code. We'd be screwed, right? Um, let's access the comm system because we could probably speak to uh, our friend. Um, it's inoperative though. Run diagnostic on damaged systems. Comm system unit inoperative because the signal unit has been destroyed. Naturally. Okay. Access cameras. Containment field camera. Ooh, hang on. This is close to where T3 was attacked. There's no way to shut the field down that you can see from this terminal. Uh, maintenance level. Okay, that's that. Fuel line sensors. Oh, there he is. Okay, T3's been put. The fuel line deposits fuel into docked starships. Since no ship's currently docked, it is sealed. There appears to be a damaged T3 unit dumped into the fuel line. It may be your missing T3 unit. There is also some sort of metal case next to T3, but you can't make it out. Okay, so T3 got damaged and thrown into the fuel line as well. Was that HK that did that as well? I don't know. Um, fuel line sensors was there. Airlock camera. There you go. Okay, let's enter the voice print code. Maintenance control, voice print ID, R1B5. Beeping from droid console. Nice. Okay, open door to airlock with maintenance officer override. There it is. We did it, baby. Okay. Let's log out. Sweet. Okay. You found T3 and 4 damaged in one of the fuel line pipes in the Pragas fuel depot. He looks damaged, but you have no idea how he got there. And you have tracked down the terminal used to poison the miners to a console within the Paragus Fuel Depot. There is no record of who used the terminal, but the incident took place after the maintenance officer voice printed the terminal, which means only he or someone with his voice could have had access to it. Okay. Let's go talk to HK again about the potential voice print details. All right, so this is the turbo lift. Uh, turbo lift to the mining tunnels is there. Hangar bay. Hangar bay sub level. Fuel control. Harbinger. Map note? Excuse me? To Harbinger engine deck? What? Map note to the Harbinger engine deck. What? Map note. Fuel line to Harbinger. 
Ugh, did the game just give away on the map that... I think the game just gave away that the Harbinger's gonna be the ship to rock out. Which doesn't surprise me, because, it, like, anyway, like, obviously HK is going, there's gonna be another ship that's going to arrive. So that's the fuel line to Harbinger. I think it, I think the game just gave it away. That's a bit of a weird oversight. Uh, droid control station, turbo lift to admin. That's so silly. All right, well... It's not, it's not too much of a giveaway. It makes sense that if a ship's gonna rock up and arrive, it's gonna probably be the one that was already not too happy with the fact that, uh, you know, we were taken from the, the Harbinger in the first place, you know? Uh, let's use another sonic grenade, because I have a decent amount of those. Nice. Why did that destroy the one that was closest to me and not the one that was right next to it? Weird. Actually, they're not that... Oh, they're floating mines. Oh, well, that makes more sense. They're floating mines. I thought it's... Oh, I misread... I thought they were stun droids, but that's the ability that I had. Such an idiot. Okay, I misread them. Not floating mines. God damn it. I went, all right, that's fine. I'll just run right into them. That's all right. It didn't do much damage to me. Before we go through the airlock, we'll head back this way. Oh, I just realized we're on the other side. That's where we were before as T3. That makes sense. Okay, which means on the map, we are over here. Ah, uh, okay. So that's down the bottom on the map. That's the fuel line down there. I see. So we go out the airlock, we'll go around and I think we'll get over here or something. Okay. I guess we can assume safely that the Harbinger is going to be the ship that's going to rock up. HK has probably sent out a signal to contact them and be like, come get us. Get him. Okay. Now let's let's ask let's ask HK about this uh, this lovely uh, command. Okay, um, how do you know me again? Let me see if there's another thing um, about the medical facility. All right, how do you know me again? I think it's tied to. Who was your previous master? How did you get here? Tell me everything that happened. Um, Tell me everything that happened between the Harbinger and now. Ah, oh, it's just skipping his dialogue. It's skipping his... Oh, hang on. Someone... I was told about this. I was... Hang on. I was told about this. Speculation. Uh, apparently... Clarific. Um... Oh, let me get through this. He is talking now. This freighter at your cargo compartment, I... Uh, so he's talking about this history again. I've already asked about this. Hold on. Uh, apparently this is an, an, an issue or a bug with the, with the game, uh, tied to dialogue. I was given this as a warning that you just, apparently dialogue skips. It's like a bug with the game if you play it for an extended period of time. Uh, so it's a good thing that we just caught it when we were getting some repeated dialogue. So I think every time that happens, all I, all I need to do is just restart the game and I think it's fine. We love older games with weird glitches. Um, let me just restart and uh, we'll fix this one up. Okay, we are back. Greeting. So I want to see if there is a way for us to check out about... Oh, there we go. I can ask him about the T3 unit in one of the fuel pipes as well. So let's ask him about T3. Alarmed query. Indeed. Master, how is it possible that a T3 unit got dumped in such a place? Like a piece of unwanted garbage? Thoughtful extrapolation. Perhaps it ran afoul of the other droids in this facility and was attacked. Most distressing. It is too bad that there is no way to reach the droid from here, Master. Otherwise you might be able to determine what happened to it. This droid is so suspicious. Of course, Master. Um... 
What are you Proud about? answer. This Proud one, answer. Veiled threats. Clarification. Oh, yes, master. Sometimes the facilitation of communications and termination of hostilities requires the use of every weapon in one's verbal arsenal. The unspoken threat of violence to a listener's <laughs> loved ones, or if possible, their entire planet, can effectively break the deadlock in the most stubborn of negotiations. <laughs> What's a translation droid doing on Paragus? Irritated explanation. Okay, so... Condescending retraction. I believe you will do your best, Master. This facility would have to be nailed down with a droid-level precision to prevent your escape. Yeah. yeah. Almost as if you've kept- you're keeping me here. Alright, we'll talk about- I guess we'll talk more with Kriya later in regards to the droid. Let's head through the airlock. So yeah, something that I just need to keep in mind, because uh, I guess once I finish playing like a session of the game is to just restart it, just to avoid in that like the bug in relation to the dialogue skipping, and then I won't have to worry about it. Airlock in a door. Let's get out of here. Storage locker. In order to exit the airlock, you would need the spacesuit stored in the locker in this room. It should equip automatically when you suspect, uh, select outer airlock. I wonder if we'll be able to access the Ebonhawk storage locker when we get back on it. I would assume so. Alright, let's have a look at the spacesuit. God, hang on. It'd be nice if there was just being able to filter it by new items only. But that's okay. Uh, spacesuit. This is a standard model spacesuit used to protect its wearer from the cold vacuum of space. Because of its design, anyone wearing the suit will have to unequip their weapons. I wonder if it's going to control exactly the same as the suit from the first game. So apparently it should automatically equip when we leave the ship. Yep, it's the, yeah, it's pretty much the same. Yep, it's... Oh, we move faster! Thank God! It's not slow! It specifically looks like our character is sped up and that's so funny. Cool though. We're on the outside of the ship. That's awesome. Alright. Uh, do I have to wait until this is not... I think this stops briefly. Hold on. I don't know if it's going to damage me. Oh. No. Yeah. No. Does it stop or does it not? I'm just going to fucking go. Yep, it does damage me. It hurts me. I felt like it would. Ah. <laughs> Look at my little legs go! Oh man, that's so funny. I actually do wonder if this might be like a change in the restored content mod potentially. It's about time. Oh, that's me. Your signal after you left the mining tunnels. Now you're coming in clear. Except I'm picking you He's up on the there. exterior of the facility. On the asteroid surface. That can't be right. Hello. Can he not see me? Like I'm I'm literally right in front of you, bud. I'm right outside the observation window. Huh? What are you doing out there? Uh, I need to reach the miners in the dormitory section, and this is the only way to get out there. You're crazy, even for a Jedi. Look, you need to get out of there, quick. Uh, what do you mean? What little is left of the facility's venting systems have gone active, most likely from the explosions in the mining tunnels. They're venting Paragus fuel deposits into space through the exterior vents, right in your path. I'll be fine. Can't you shut them down? I can't. I'm locked out of the main systems here. I couldn't shut it down if I tried. The vents look like they've been purposely rerouted to vent the gases to the exterior. And only in the last few minutes, it's almost <laughs> as if... Yep. Now what now? I don't believe this. There's a ship coming in, sending a docking code. I have a bad feeling about this. Uh, they said the line. Uh, it's a Republic vessel. It's the Harbinger. I had no idea the Harbinger was coming. I, I definitely didn't look at a map.
Holy shit, dude. Okay. All right, then. So we knew that the Harbinger was going to rock up, but we didn't know who was going to be on the Harbinger. Holy shit. Okay, Kreia, he has come. That scene was so cool because there was just no words needed. And it immediately sets the tone of, oh god, oh fuck. You know what I mean? Like, as soon as you see a scene, you're like, oh, the Harbinger's coming. So the Republic's coming, you know, this Republic ship. So we'll see what happens like a sea of scattered dead Republic soldiers surrounded by our uh, our mystery Sith because yeah, I don't know who he is um, yeah. interesting hmm and it's like oh it looks like it, it was activated only minutes before so We've got HK working against us to try and escape, who has hailed the Harbinger, which has Darth Sion on it. I can't wait to hear what he sounds like, or if I'm even pronouncing his name correctly. I can't wait, because like I said in the first episode, just in case you guys might have missed my introduction or skipped past it, is I said that I am aware of his name specifically because uh, it's an unlockable costume in the Force Unleashed game. So I know that his his name, if I'm pronouncing it uh, correctly, but that's like that's it. So, but seeing him, just his introduction, no dialogue, just doing like Sith meditation, channeling some some hatred and rage. Interestingly enough, and we've made it through despite being uh, apparently. Uh, despite there being an attempt to hinder our progress into the dormitory levels, we will st we will see if there's any survivors. Okay. And then Kriya speaking to us, saying, He has come. Ah! Hello! <laughs> Just new Jedi reflexes. course you would save. Let's try again. And of course you would save once again, wouldn't you? How am I? He's right in front of me! Stop missing! You got this. Thank you. Alright, uh, looking like there's not going to be any survivors down here, but I should be able to at least get some items. Data pad storage log. Now the fire suppression systems have gone active and I can't even make it to the dormitory section. I watched the turrets turn their carbonite freeze rays on Maben before he even got halfway across the room. Fortunately, their range doesn't seem to go beyond the room itself, so I was able to remain safe in the corridor, but I didn't have any ranged weapons to take them out from a distance, and I didn't have a stealth field generator to sneak across the room either. I tried unlocking the storage room door to see if there were any cold resistant items or grenades I could use, but the door was sealed from the lockdown. I don't know enough about security systems to open it, and I didn't have a sonic charge to blow the door open. Still, as long as the droids don't make it into this section, I should be alright. So there's, uh, 
these carbonite freeze rays on uh, on some turrets. So we should be able to shoot them from a distance with our mining laser, hopefully. But let's have a look in here. So we are more fortunate than that poor fellow, and we can actually uh, we can actually get our way in here. Okay, another large locker. Battle simulant insulated gloves. There you go. Let's have a look at this. So this gives us immunity, 30% versus cold. There you go. Chuck those bad boys on. So resistant to the cold. Some more chemicals. Let's have a look at the workbench. So now oh, we can use it to upgrade items. Let's have a look. What do we have? We've got the environment underlay, which also gives us a 15% cold. Um, there you go. I don't think... That one can't be used on this one. Okay. Nice. Assemble. Okay. Cool. Nice. Uh, create or... Hang on. Create or break down items. Unfortunate thing about... I think it might be the fact that the game is in windowed mode, but the arrow or the cursor doesn't exactly line up to where you're trying to look sometimes, which is a bit, a bit annoying. Um, let's have a look. I think we'll be fine with what we what we have for now. We've got resistant to the cold, and I can also switch weapons. Oh, hang on, we picked up a better weapon recently, I think. So heavy mining laser does two to sixteen instead of one to twelve. Twenty-eight meters, twenty-eight meters. Yes, not upgradable. Oh, hang on, this one might be upgradable. Alright, let's equip the heavy mining laser. Look at that big boy! Okay. So we've got resistant to the cold as well as long distance fire. Automated fire extinguisher. That's what it is. Nice. Just do it from the distance. Thank you so much for that data pad intel from that corpse that has helped us survive. Maybe I'll move in ever so slightly. Oh, it's getting me. Okay, get it. There we go, nice. Okay. I think we'll be okay from here. We've got a resistance to the cold. Yes, we didn't get frozen. one of them so I can check out this corpse anytime you want to check out that corpse is fine with me there you go beam splitter mark one and then uh, a greenium grip what is that um, how everything is okay so many items it's an upgrade item for melee damage bonus one for slashing uh, beam splitter mark one upgrade item for ranged increasing damage or possibly granting other effects okay let me head back to this workbench we can see if we can upgrade these items real quick any advantage is a good one upgrade items now yeah I, I guess not because nothing's showing up in here to upgrade. So I guess we can't do that yet. I guess this is the dormitory section. Nope, hello. Another one. Oh, yeah, this one has a shield. Oh god, it's got cold laser. Uh, shit. Hang on, let me quick... Let me deal with this real quick. Uh, let's just do the sonic grenade. Oh god, get away from me! Get away from me! Oh god! All right, hang on. Switch weapons. Switch weapons. Okay. Attack it. Oh god, don't shoot me with the laser. God damn it. I'm going to get frozen so badly I can just tell. Come on, man. Oh no. Oh no. I'm also going to get killed. I'm dead. Ah, uh, shit, man. I can't even... I'm dead. 
Okay. Was there an auto save? <laughs> ah! It is a pleasure to see you intact, Master. That's my bad. All right. Imagine the. There's, a, there's no auto save, dude. That's gonna be something I need to look out for. Uh, should that not be in settings gameplay? Is there not an auto save is turned on? Each time you move to a new area, if you have had an auto save in the last 15 minutes, you should still manually save often. Yep, thank you for telling me. Auto save is turned on, dude. There ain't one. These are all my manual saves. Oh no, hang on, there's the auto save. Never mind, hold on. But the auto save is ages ago! What the fuck? <laughs> Okay, the autosave was ages ago. Well, I'm gonna go do all of that again, I suppose. Alright, we're ready to we're ready to try this area again. So <laughs> let's switch weapons and try and shoot it from a distance. Let's see how accurate we can be. And then we're gonna try and just spam some sonic slash iron grenades uh, as soon as we can. Alright, I'm gonna have to move in a little bit. Sonic iron grenades on these droids so we can avoid getting massacred. Come on, I, I believe in you. You can do this. One more shot. Oh, didn't it didn't even shoot the power blast. If we could if we could not get frozen. Oh, it's ah oh, the 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 cold ray is stopping my. Okay, I get it. The Carbonite Ray is cancelling all of my attacks. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can do this without wasting my force power. Go. Gotta save my stun droid. Iron Charger Mark 1. It's given us different items now. I think you might get... That's interesting. So now we've got an Iron Charger instead of the two things that we got before. So it's an upgrade item for ranged bonus damage to, to droids. Damn. I didn't... I was not aware that that was going to be a thing. So... Apparently when you reload areas, uh, you, you, you get different drops. I don't know why, but you do. Okay, so... We want to start this off with... Uh, I'm going to put a... Now, in terms of shielding, I got a Mandalorian melee shield in one of the lockers. I don't know if I got that before. That might be another thing that was different in the in the locker. Uh, I was thinking of equipping this because the droids run up to you and try and hit you, but... I don't feel like an energy shield will block against their... Like, the Carbonite. Let's let's just let's just see. So, stun droid. Actually, they're both together. Quick, do the do the iron grenade real quick. Real quick. Oh, that only did. Okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yes. Okay, it worked. Switch weapons. We got this, buddy. Nice. Okay, there's one fire suppression droid dealt with. We use a med pack. Uh, stun droid. Oh, this, I know that there's another one somewhere, so be careful. Okay, we're getting good with the stuns. Not very good with the flurries, though. He's asleep. You can't. There's no excuse for missing him, bud. He didn't even take damage. What? What the fuck? Thank you. Okay. Uh, now there's another one in here. There it is. Fire suppression droid. Uh, let's try... This is where stealth would probably come quite in handy. Uh, let's try stunning. And then a sonic grenade. Ooh, it's saved. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. 
Oh, that's okay. We might be able to kill it. Thank you. Okay. Ooh. First try. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Pheromone package. Okay. Persuade. Ooh, it's okay. It's persuade and charisma plus one. Uh, is that a... it is. Yes, please. I'll take it. Nice. Okay, we've got an implant on. Shift assignment console. And there's another droid down there. I'm going to take this opportunity. I'm going to just... Because the autosave just doesn't want to exist anymore. I'm going to make sure that I do this frequently. Alright, shift assignment console. Let's have a look. Primary functions offline. We can destroy the console to force open the dormitory door, apparently. Or we can use a repair part or a computer spike. We've got more repair parts, so let's reroute the main console system. You've rerouted the system bypassing the main console functions. Nice. Uh, let's check duty shift logs. There appear to be nothing more than long lists of work assignments with the number of miners available for duty decreasing after the past three days, citing several med bay logs. Uh, remote camera controls. Mess hole has a bunch of droids in it. Surprise, surprise. Dormitory West. Everyone looks dead. Shut down dormitory ventilation system. Looks like the miners inside the dormitory are either dead or unconscious, and that gas you see on the screen looks toxic. Is it going to be? It's like episode one all over again. Dioxys. Uh, so we can use a computer spike to turn it off, but before we do that, let's have a look at dormitory East. It's just the other side. I wonder if that just shuts down everywhere. All right, I think we'll do that because we need to go through there. So let's shut it down. Yeah, they look, they look pleasantly toasted. So they're dead. Uh, turbo lift to administration. We've got a console there. Um, and main console functions. Uh, access dormitory comm system. The comm system crackles to life. There is no sound coming from the dormitories. Okay, end the lockdown. Now I'll be able to go in. Because there's no deadly gas. All right, let's log out. Let's head around here. There's a droid for us to take on. Yes, it worked. Get in there. Let's go. Before it wakes up. <laughs> if you could stop missing, that would be great. If you could stop missing, that would be great! God damn it. Jesus. Thank you. Of course he would save. Get him! Oh, you got a fucking maintenance droid with you. God damn it. Oh god. Dude, attack the maintenance droid. I said to attack the maintenance droid. Oh my god. I don't know what it is. But your sometimes your character just refuses to actually attack the correct the correct target sometimes. And it's it's killing me, dude. Can you please stop chilling me. Running away. Um, let me just put an energy shield on. See if that does anything. Okay. This fire suppression droid is no joke, dude. There we go. Now please get some hits off. Thank you. God damn. Maintenance droid is nowhere in sight. There it is, it's over there. Nice. This energy shield has come in handy for these droids because they don't switch to melee attacks, which is really nice. There we go. Nice, and we can level up. I might save the level up just in case I take some damage. And that will allow me to go back to being full health. I assume that works the same as the last game. 
Hopefully. Okay, maintenance droid. Ah! Oh, I forgot that there's... Okay. Hold on. Uh, I'm just going to go for this instead. There we go. Alright, now I need to switch weapons. And take these guys out. Oh, stop cancelling my attacks, dude. Get him. Alright, get the other one. One more. Nice shot. I believe in you, man. Thank you. Okay. God, this place is dangerous as hell. Right, switch weapons again. Fire suppression droid. Let's go. Oh god, we've entered a room that's okay. Potential potential danger. You know what? Alright, let's let's wanted to see if they'll group up together or something so then I could use a grenade okay Target it without it caught it. Okay, that's gonna damage me anyway. Okay. I was hoping that it would throw it from a distance where it wouldn't damage me. At least this is the fuck. At least it's an excavator droid. It's not a fire suppression one. So I feel I feel safer already. Alright, where are we in the in the area at the moment? Oh shit, it's quarter. Wow. Okay. Oh, he didn't make it. Scattered survival kit. Right, we'll head in there in a second. Alright, we've got a minor log and a guide on beacon. Got another lecture about contraband today. Security hasn't started doing spot checks of our quarters yet, so my cache in the lower bunk of my room in the eastern dormitory should be safe. You won't even know it's there unless you know to look for it. Quarter came around again, asking if I had any special cargo to sell, but I was getting a bad feeling about how he was asking, so I stayed quiet about my stash. I'm going to keep that blaster I smuggled from Telos and a few grenades here there just in case things get rough. Only benefit to having a room the farthest from the door is that it should buy me enough time to dump the contraband if security does a surprise inspection. Nice, so we'll have a look uh, in that room in the dormitory as well. Okay. So we'll head to the, I think the dormitory might be, yeah, is that way. So let's have a look at what's down here. Considering we've got the body of quarter here. Mining laser and a minor log. The hollow log looks like it needs to be plugged into a hollow reader in order to play back the contents. Okay, so we should be able to do that at this console here. Another mining laser. All the med packs are very appreciated from these guys. Turbo lift, ah, oh, turbo lift console. Okay, access camera logs. Recording five minutes after emergency lockdown. Cool. Almost didn't make it out of the dormitory section before the lockdown, you murglack. You're cutting a little close, aren't you? Yes. A regrettable miscalculation on my part. 
I'm contacting you because I'm picking up a subspace transmission from within that level. Is that your doing? No, they, they must be trying to use the old relay system to send an emergency signal. I doubt they know what's really going on. Hey, this turbo lift's locked down. Try the code again, and don't worry about the miners and their transmission. By the time help arrives, we'll be all the way to Nar Shada. Oh, they won't be leaving the dormitories. The explosion within the tunnel has damaged the ventilation systems, causing breaches in the core exhaust conduits. What? That's going to kill them all! Not all of them, but I'm sending a number of mining droids to your location right now to correct that problem. Korda, this turbo lift's locked down. The sequence isn't working. Keep trying it! You! Why are you doing this? Why me? You. It was never about you. The Jedi is all that interests me. But then you had to ruin everything by revealing his identity, and then trying to harm him. And that I cannot allow. Statement. You are a risk, Corda. You are impulsive, crude, and soon, deceased. Statement. Query. Corta, Corta, are you dead yet? Smug statement. I believe I forgot to mention that I reversed the turbo lift codes in case you managed to get this far. Dude, HK is an evil son of a bitch. My god. So that was the five we minute thing. The Everyone's just like talking years. about it. No, they. Hey, just try the code again. Oh, they won't be leaving the dormitories. What? Not all of them. But I'm sending a number of mining droids to your location right- Korda, this turbo- Keep trying it! You. It was never about you. The Jedi is all that interests me. But then you had to ruin everything- The Jedi is all that identity. interests me. Statement. You are a- Yeah. Wild. Mmm. And then, murdered. Are you Corda, dead yet? Corta, <laughs> are you dead yet? I can't skip this at the moment, so I have to let it play out again. I to mention that I reversed the turbo lift codes in case you managed to get this far. God damn it. Okay. Open turbo lift door. So, turbo lift door locked. Enter a five number code sequence. Interesting. You can slice the door with a spike or enter the code manually. It's so it's a number from it's five numbers ranging from uh, one to twenty, apparently. I don't know what it is, so obviously we're not going to do that. Uh, but apparently if you destroy the console, it will force open the door. Shall we try it? We tried it. There you go. We forced open the door. Journal entry added. Although the HK protocol droid told you to see if you can find the administration officer in the dormitory to see if he has the access codes, a Republic ship has docked with the mining facility. It is possible that you could use the fuel connection line to bypass the force field in the fuel depot and enter the hangar from another direction, bypassing the force field entirely. I think it might have been a completed one. There you go. You have unlocked the turbo lift to the admin level by destroying the control terminal. There you go. Okay, so we can go to the administration level. But we're going to check out the dormitories first. Also, I may as well just level up now instead of holding on to it. So, skills. I'm going to level up repair. We're getting four. I need to definitely get that intelligence up more so I can have more skills per level. Up my persuade. And then I'm going to do... And we'll just we'll put repair up some more. There you go. All right, powers. We got a, a new power to pick. Uh, obviously, we're doing nothing but droids at the moment, so naturally that fear ability is not going to come in handy yet. I would love the ability for us to get. Uh, hang on, where is it? Disable droid. Prerequisites. Our character needs to be level six, and I guess we are not yet there. 
hang on. Stun droid. Disable droid. Hang on. Yeah. Yeah, disable droid level six. We cannot do that yet because it's highlighted in red. Um, I would love if we could also get heal, but we also need to be character level six for that as well. So... It might be, it could be a good idea to get through lightsaber. Increases physical attributes and saving throws by two points. Maybe I'll get burst of speed and we'll actually utilize force speed so we can do more actions faster. And we'll accept. There you go. So we'll do force, force speed. Now let's head into the dormitories. Now I think there was, there's two ways to access it. Probably this way. Oh no, hang on. This is just one room. Never mind. This is not the way. I, I just thought this might have been a second way to the dormitories. It ain't. Instead, lab stations. We can actually make some stuff. Now, med pack. It costs 20 to make one. And we have 69. Let's make two med packs. Just a couple more would be nice. Chemicals. Chemicals. Storage canister. Data pad. Oh, we got a breath mask and data pad the mess hole log. I swear they're never going to get around to fixing the ventilation systems, and if the food processes back up again, the next time the fumes start flooding the mess hole, I'll be dead rather than just nauseous. I'll keep the breath mask here just in case we have a repeat incident. Okay, so instead of using the computer spike to turn off that gas, I could have put a breath mask on instead and saved me a spike. It's cool that there are just like multiple sort of options for each uh, for each area, which is which is really nice. So obviously we opted to go through. The only option that seemed available to us at the time, however, there was a breath breath mask um, option too, which is pretty sweet. Okay, let's go through the dormitories now, and we'll go and check this uh, apparently bed that's furthest from the room uh, for some items. Let's check out what's in here as well. Hello. Just a couple of droids. That's a fire suppression droid. Funnily enough, it's not actually there. It is. I was wondering when that was going to happen. failure try again there we go chemicals and components nice environment underlay and iron charger mark one so just more upgrade items sweet I think we oh we did not check this damaged cylinder Blast cylinder has been damaged in the explosion. The lock is melted, but you might be able to blast it open with a mine. Uh, I think we can craft one in that case. That requires us going to the workbench. We currently don't have a mine on us. Let's see if we can find one though. Hello. Ooh, nice. That's a good hit. the ventilation area we turned off. Broken log terminal. Uh, we can scavenge the console for components at least. You have scavenged some components from the broken terminal. That's cool. Alright, looting some dormitories. Let's have a look. Energy shield and credits.
Interesting. A footlocker that I can't... Ooh, mine foreman log in the refresher. This hollow log looks like it needs to be plugged into a hollow reader in order to play back the contents. Okay. Interesting. I can't interact with that footlocker. I'm assuming it should pop up with a thing when we find the like the, the dorm room that we can interact with with the secret stash. Dock officer corpse. Dock officer log. This hollow looks like, again, another hollow reader. So we'll need to get to a terminal. Damaged door. Okay. You'll need to blow it open with a mine. Damn it. Alright, that's, that's the second thing I need with a mine. Crippling scope and energy shielding. Alright, in that case, let's head back. I'll need to get myself a couple of mines. We might find one over this side. Another one of these bad boys. I believe in you, you've got this. Okay. Administration officer. Yeah, this one's working, I think. Log terminal's actually working. There we go. Um, and we can insert hollow logs here. There we go, because we've got three of them. Uh, search for logged hollow display entries. No hollow logs on system, so we can actually put them in here. So insert mine foreman hollow log. Access entry. Much trouble. Nice, it's a solicitor. New alien dialogue just dropped. Ferrara <laughs> Nice, okay. So this is the... This is a log of a Celestin, which is really cool. Uh, new alien dialogue. Because we haven't actually spoken to any aliens yet. I want to find out if they speak the same as uh, the first game or not. <laughs> That's essentially, I don't want anything to do with the exchange or to sell the Jedi. Talk with quarter failure. Had a careful, inoffensive talk with Quarter and asked him not to make trouble with the Jedi, remind him we were ordered to leave Jedi alone, we should follow orders, or the facility would fall apart. My words had much sense, but Quarter got all angry and human face, and then the said the facility is going to fall apart anyway. After the talk, I listed, uh, listened to him talking to the maintenance officer. Why do they do this? I'm thinking of repeating this to the administration officer, but that will cause more trouble. What do I do? Alright, uh, must take action, entry incomplete. Uh, I heard last com talk from quarter to the maintenance officer. The maintenance officer said he had a big plan for disabling the station, leaving us all trapped here while he and quarter escaped with the Jedi. I'm still afraid of quarter, who is big, loud, and unreasonable, so I went to the maintenance officer, who is smaller, more sensible, more solicited. I asked him why he made trouble with quarter. The maintenance officer cracked eyebrow hair at me, pretend to not know what talking about. Uh, saying he not speak to quarter at all. Why do all humans lie? Can't wait any longer. Must. Got killed by quarter. Your ears always were too big, CN. Come on, if the maintenance officer comes through on the explosions, these dorms are going to be filling up soon. And shut that damn data pad off and throw it down the refresher. Well, that was the refresher. There you go. Damn. Uh, let's insert the dock officer holog evacuation. We managed to get to the dormitories. We should be safe here. We've been trying to use the holo transmitter to beam a transmission to the administration level to end the lockdown. But the administration console's been severed from the main hub. Everyone thinks we should try to evacuate on our own as soon as possible. But there's no way to break the dormitory seals from the inside. I'm going to keep sending distress calls in the meantime. 
We've been trying to find a way to circumvent the lockdown and get to our hangar bay, but so far, no luck. Okay, uh, fuel depot, force field. <sighs> the situation's worse than we thought. Even if we get out of here, we can't shut down the fuel depot force fields if a fuel leak was detected. If so, the only way off this asteroid is if a ship docks with us. But the only connection to the docking platform is on the administration level, and we can't get up to the docking bay while we're trapped here. I only hope someone survived the explosion in the mining tunnels. If not, then we're stranded here. Unless our transmission reaches a passing ship, or a Telos freighter. Okay, distress transmission. Managed to use the hollow transmitter here as a crude relay to beam short burst transmissions outside the Paragas facility. With any luck, the transmission will carry beyond the asteroid field. We've set the emergency transmission on automatic playback. We're using a simple military flash code to transmit the code to the turbo lifts, so maybe our rescuers can get down to the dormitory when they reach the station. Without those turbo lift codes, our rescuers wouldn't be able to get here from the administration level. And without those codes, we wouldn't be able to get to the administration level if we found a way out on our own. <sighs> the messages are short distress calls only, since we can't get much signal strength. It's pretty weak, so unless a ship is actively searching the area, it might be a long time before a ship picks up the message. After all, who would be scouring frequencies way out here looking for trouble? Mm, I don't know. Who would be? Uh, and then we've got the minor hollow log. Minor quarter log active. Warning log encrypted. Okay. Play quarters hollow log. We cannot. Check the transmission. Okay. Transmitting subspace flash sequence. We've got an intelligence check, which looks like a military flash code. If I can get a few, if I can get a reference number for a few of the symbols, I should be able to decode it. Interesting. So there's a transmission. We can get a reference number. That might be on quarters hollow log, which is encrypted. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. We'll need to... Oh, there's a mine administrator log. Hang on, we've got another one. Uh, you found a corpse of the administration officer. He had a hollow log on his body, which could contain the codes to open the hangar bay if you can find a hollow log reader. If the log doesn't contain the codes, you'll need to find another way past the field depot force fields to reach the Ebon Hawk. So it looks like we just have a bunch of optional sort of pathways that we can take. As, that's how it seems to me. We can either go like through fuel lines and so, like go past anything, or we can do it this way. Like I think we have options. Uh, let's insert the mine administrator log. Two logs recorded. Emergency status and inventory and supplies. This may be the beginning of a long record. It's about an hour after the facility suffered the explosion that triggered the emergency lockdown. Just finished helping the dock officer set up the transmission relay. Not much signal strength, but it's better than nothing. The transmission gives the code to open the turbo lift when or if help arrives. Code is a simple group of five numbers. Three, 17, 13, then the next two numbers are... Sir, couldn't we contact the med bay? Maybe the Jedi's awake. If so, he could help us. No good. The link to the medical computer was severed from the hub, just like the administration console. Even if the Jedi wakes up, how would we get the dormitory turbo lift code to him? Without it, the turbo lift to the administration level is locked down. I love how he put in... We've already got we got three numbers, and I guess the other ones you just have to do trial and, and error, but obviously we've already broken the console to get in there, so we don't actually need the code, so we're fine. <laughs> we just took an inventory of our supplies. We've got enough emergency rations in the dormitories to last almost a month. But with all the problems in the facility, I don't know how long we'll last. I wish we could contact the Jedi. Maybe he could... But no, he's still floating in that damn tank. Someone's played us for fools. And since Korda and his crew are locked in here with us, it's pretty clear who it was. If I ever catch up with that Mandalorian loving son of a... At least the air scrubbers are still working, even though they're tied into the... Hey, what's happening to the ventilation system? It's... Damn, dude. His eyes are terrifying. <laughs> oh. Whoop. Whoop. <laughs> Whoop. Whoop. <laughs> Just the, the way that they drop to the ground. <laughs> okay, log out. That's fine. Okay. You reach the dormitory officer only to find the administration officer dead. Found a partial code to open the turbo lift, but no codes for the hangar. Without those codes, you need to find another way to bypass the force fields. Maybe that Dr. Republic ship has the answer if you can get to it. So if we go through the fuel lines, we can get to the Republic ship. 
and then that might have more answers. All right, maybe there's not multiple options like I mentioned. Maybe I got ahead of myself there. All right, let's have a look around here where everybody got gassed. And then if we still don't find any mines to scavenge, I'll see if we're able to make our own we need to get one of those doors open and then the cylinder open as well. I'll prioritize the door if we only find one mine. Okay. Oh no, we've got another damaged door in here as well. Shit. So that's two doors that we need a mine for. That complicates things. Alright, let me head back to the workbench. It'd be nice if my demolition skill would allow me to recover these bad boys, but this will I, I don't have the ability to. I'm not I'm not well versed enough with my demolition skill. It might have been a good idea for me to put some points into into it, but unfortunately not. If I put on the safety harness that still doesn't allow me to uh, to do it. I can only I can only destroy them. Which is a which is definitely a sham. Definitely a sham. But we'll see if we can make some. I'm not sure if we're able to. Uh, workbench. Uh, create items now. Uh, would it be an other? Melee ranged. Because these are just upgrades. I don't think we have the ability to. Damn, okay. So I think I can. I'm missing out on being able to get these doors open because I'm not good enough with my demolitions to recover some mines to use on the doors. That is big shame. So I'm missing out, unfortunately, because my character is just not able to do it. Uh, in that case, we just got to go through the the turbo lift to administration. Uh, maybe we might be able to find some mines on the way, or I can just uh, maybe get a level up at some point soon. <laughs> put a point, put some points into demolition, and then put on the belt, and then save my game. So I can try and not fail those uh, demolition checks, <laughs> but we will we will see. All right, let's go to Paragus. Paragus, sorry. I keep wanting to say Peg Paragus, like Pegasus. Uh, we'll go to the Paragus. Hello. What are you doing here? I have felt a disturbance. Our enemy is here. We must leave at once. Uh, enemy. The one that fired upon the Ebon Hawk as we attempted to rescue you. And he will not let us go without blood being shed. As we attempted to rescue you. Wait, who is this enemy? The story is a long one, and time is short. Come, we must go, and quickly. Okay, alright, let's go. We need to make our way to the docking area on this level. I fear the airlock has already opened, and if so, we must be on our guard. If we cannot reach the Ebon Hawk, then we must find a way to escape on the ship that has docked here. Ah, Kreia has joined your party. When she is in your active party, her mental special ability gives everyone a bonus to earned experience points. Okay. Uh, party member yes. unlocked. Hello. Okay, let's have a look. So you've got 16 constitution, 16 dex, 14 intelligence, 16 wisdom. Okay, let's level you up. So, currently level 4. Um, I will level up your... Uh, we've got one point that we can put in. I guess I will... All of these are already at plus 3 or plus 2. I'll give you some more wisdom then for your force powers. Okay, skills. Now... 
five stealth, six awareness, no repair, treat injury, can't do persuade naturally. Maybe I should give her. <laughs> oh, it'll cost more. I'm not going to give her demolitions. I will. To your ability to treat injury, awareness, stealth, I guess. Or maybe. Yeah, let's do that. And then we can give her a power. Hang on. She already has. Mm, she has a dark side power. That's interesting. Kriya has fear. She has a dark side power already. And force push, energy resistance, and burst of speed. That's uh, that's interesting. She only has universal powers and a dark side power before she has a light side power. Maybe she's not what she seems. Maybe no one is what they seem to be right now. We've got... I don't even know who our character is. Am I predict? Am I expecting another weird twist based on who our character actually was? With our mysterious past? We don't even know who Kriya was. We're assuming Jedi, but there is a dark side power, and we don't know her. There's this HK droid that is like, Oh yeah, you're our master, but we also don't know. But this, uh, this other dude, who is clearly a dark side entity, is our enemy, so I don't, I don't know. I'm getting, I'm it's, getting weird vibes from the story, it's very interesting. I am going to give... Hmm... Maybe I'll give her the ability to do... Force Valor, which increases physical attributes and saving throws of all party members, so we can do it for everyone. I'll give you that. Except, we do have multiple levels, which is nice, because you've just, jo just joined. So I'll bump these points up. I guess I'll put it in repair, because it only costs one. Uh, another power. I guess maybe we'll go for... Maybe I'll do another dark side power, why not? We'll do shock. Uh, add shock to the list. I mean, she is in the gray, interestingly enough, you know? She's in the, in the gray, morally. So, I don't know. Next level, however, I get to uh, unlock those level six abilities, which is cool. Oh, actually, I should check out your... What you got? You don't even... Yeah, you don't even have anything. What is this? This is a... Beacon to stake claims on asteroids. Double as a battle staff. And the anchoring pike on the tip can be used to slash opponents. Does 1 to 6 damage. Might as well use the mining laser. Does 1 to 8. Um, yeah, you want to equip that? And then maybe you can also equip the mining laser as a secondary weapon. Ooh, it's a double. Okay, it's a double. That's cool. Uh, we'll give you the... Uh, Kriya does have stealth, so I might give her the stealth generator. Give you an energy shield. Uh, I'll give you a neural band. Not even worth giving you that. Uh, constitution or reflex. We'll give you constitution plus one. Nice. All right. You have been equipped. That's cool. Cool little staff. All right. Um, tab to switch characters. Cool. Oh, I see where we are now. We've, uh... Oh, that's why Kriya showed up here, because we're literally right at the beginning again. We've just curved all the way around. Nicely done. Uh, I'll, I'll speak to you then. What is it? This is not the time for questions. Uh... Well, I want to talk about stuff. It's time for answers. Who's pursuing us and why? They are assassins, and they are responsible for the attack on the Ebon Hawk and the Harbinger. I did not expect them to find us so quickly. We must escape this facility. If we remain here, then we will die. So assassins attacked the Harbinger and then attacked the Ebon Hawk as well. Your cryptic standoffish routine is starting to anger me. <laughs> And your stubborn blindness to our situation is equally frustrating. I would have expected more from a war veteran, but yet you disappoint me. 
Ouch. Maybe if you told me who these attackers chasing us are, we could settle this. They are assassins. We must escape this facility. Okay, very well. Let's keep moving then. Uh, let's check the journal. Uh, okay, so we've got Kriya. We need to go into the fuel line to get T3. Um, now, let's have a look. I guess we can go off the uh, in this direction now, so we can head back to our friend Atten, now that we're back. Whoa, whoa! Oh shit, okay. Well, this, they certainly seem like assassins to me. Holy shit. We're not, we're not even sensing them right now. Oh, that's, that's such a cool way to do it where it's like, we, we as the player are aware of them, but our characters are none the wiser right now. Uh, I might make sure that Kriya has the correct stance on. We'll do Jedi support. Jedi support. All right, we're back in the main room. Yo. What in space is going on? Who's this? Another Jedi? What, did you guys suddenly start breeding when I wasn't looking? <laughs> yeah, because we never explained that there was another one. Um, it'll take too long to explain. We have to leave now. Uh, all right. I'm guessing that Republic ship that just docked isn't carrying friends of yours. I hope your talent for understatement is offset by your skill with a blaster. <laughs> if not, then I fear our time together will be short indeed. Yeah, and I'm also good at running and drinking, Your Majesty. And even if you two aren't big friends of the Republic, that warship's the only way off this station. Atten has joined your party. As long as he isn't the last party member standing, he can't be knocked out, and his saving throws improve the more he's wounded. Nice. So he actually can't be knocked out if he's not the last party member standing. Wow, okay. Good oh, thing we have a clear run to the and HK. Threat. Master, perhaps I did not enunciate clearly the last time we spoke. I suggested that you should shut down, stay put, and wait for rescue. <sighs> no, you were clear. I just don't listen to assassin droids. Clarification. Assassin and droid is such a crude term, Master. Reserved for Durasteel drones uploaded with only the most archaic kill programs. The function I perform has been referred to as wanton slaughter. I prefer to see it as a means of facilitating communication, resulting in the termination of hostilities. <laughs> God damn it. Are we about to fight this HK droid? I think we're about to. So you mimicked the maintenance officer's voice to control the droids and kill all the miners in the medical bay. Indignant answer. Master, the miners intended to place you in jeopardy. I could not allow that to take place, so I was forced to negotiate a termination of hostilities. <laughs> After reprogramming the mining droids to mine any organics they perceived, they began to kill the miners one by one. Then a series of flawlessly timed explosions drove the miners into their dormitories, where I was able to gas them all at once without wasting time hunting them through the mining tunnels. Sheesh. I then administered a large dose of sedatives to the remaining miners in the med bay, enough to kill them, but ensure you slept peacefully. Of course, against my calculations, you awaken from your tank prematurely. I am ashamed by the inconvenience that caused for both of us. God damn, that's one efficient droid, huh? Why did you want to capture me? Answer. It is beyond the scope of my programming to probe the motivations of my clients, Master. He's a bounty hunting I droid. <laughs> say that I am being well compensated for my services. You have been a difficult target to find. You have been wandering the galaxy since the end of the Mandalorian Wars, leaving little record of your passage. It is as if you did not wish to be found by hunters such as myself, or more likely, the Jedi Order. Yeah, bounty hunter HK droid, so sick. Who is this client of yours? Chiding answer. My programming renders me incapable of revealing the identity of my client, Master. However, 
I am free to say that my client is wealthy and very interested in possessing the last of the Jedi. The last Jedi. Okay, interesting. So is it related to the is it potentially related to the exchange? Hmm. Um so what now? Are you gonna kill me? Answer. No, Master. Killing you was never the intention. If you resist my attempts to return you to your Kalto tank, however, <laughs> I may inadvertently fracture your skeleton in several places to incapacitate you. Okay. How did you manage to find me in the first place? Admission. It was a matter of chance, Master. I happened to be serving as a protocol droid on the Harbinger when you booked passage. Uh... That, it was a simple matter to sabotage the Harbinger and call for a retrieval. Irritated statement. However, when the Ebon Hawk appeared and salvaged us from the wreckage, I was forced into a series of rapid recalculations, culminating in our current situation. So the protocol protocol droid was like a guise, and then like came across us by a matter of chance, and then it just kind of triggered all of this. I actually really like that as like a way that the story has like catapulted itself, that there was already an existing thing taking place, and we've just been thrown into like the aftermath of like those consequences it's a really cool way to start the start the whole thing uh i don't want to fight you but i will if you leave me no other choice resignation very well master if inflicting pain is the only means to resolve this matter then you leave me no choice ah okay uh there's a group of them all together so i'm going to start with it won't let me target him, so I'll just have to start with an iron grenade. Oh, let's start with a sonic grenade, actually. Just to start on this whole group. Uh, yeah. Okay, that are, now we can target. There you go. It's now changed. HK-50 assassin droid. HK-50. There you go, that's cool. Oh god, they're all just gonna blow up! Okay. <laughs> this is sick. Korea, no, I'm about to throw grenades. Alright. Uh, Korea, you're about to get killed. Actually, this has worked out just fine. Ooh! Oh, I think she used Force Valor, and then that's just like made us go faster. Oh, self destruct! Get away! Kriya! Get away! No! Oh my god. <laughs> I tried to get them both to run away, but like, one ran away, the other ran back in. Oh my god. Self-destruct. <laughs> I will now initiate self-destruct. Droid self-sustaining unit, HK vocabulator, and an advanced mining laser. Okay, so it was HK 50. What is it? This is not the time for questions. Okay, very well. Nice. All right, I've got. Uh, yes. Just say the word. I've got Atten in my team now, so I need to check what he's got going on too. So he's got his ribbed ribbed jacket. Uh, I need to give him. Let's give him some stuff because I didn't get the chance to do this. He's just got a mining laser. I wonder if he's got a nice ability to dual wield. Plus three, minus three. Yeah, don't do that. Get off. No weapon. You're better one-handed. Um, oh, what's his demolition skill, actually? What's your demolition skill? Oh, his demolition skill is four. All right, I might be able to take us back. So he's a scoundrel. Cool, I might be able to take him back, which is cool. We might, be, we, we might still have a chance yet to open up those doors. So I'll do that while we while we can. Now let's level him up. Attribute. So he's got he's strong, dexterous, not very intelligent, not very wise, and we don't really need him to be. Um, I'm gonna give him a bonus to. I'm gonna st we'll work on the intelligence so we can get him to have some more points to spend. I think. Oh, actually, uh, let's do constitution. All right, skills. I'm going to put another point in demolitions. 
because we want him to have some stuff that my other characters don't. Okay. Uh, another level up, more skills, more demolitions, please. Security and awareness. Perfect. And a new feat. So he's got sneak attack three. He's got uh, medium armor proficiency. Uh, he's weapon focused with a blaster pistol, which is good. Maybe toughness. Close combat. Uh, trains ranged weapon characters to fight effectively in close combat. So when the character's target is at short range, a plus one attack bonus. When these characters are engaged in melee combat, their attackers receive only a plus four instead of the usual plus six. Okay, so that's actually quite interesting. Um, finesse with melee weapons? No. We'll make him, considering he's proficient with a blaster. Um, oh, he doesn't have any of these. Let's give him power blast. There you go. Give you an ability. Except, cool. Uh, now that he's got some demolition skill, I think it might be a good idea for us to actually go back if we can. Um, just while we're here, before we leave. Oh, actually, I wonder if we're going to run into those assassins because they were back this way as well. Let's see. We might have the opportunity to quickly go back and rest in the Bacta tank. Sorry, the Colto tank. <laughs> it's Colto, not Bacta. They're not using Bacta yet. Uh, see if we can get our characters to rest in here real quick. Enter the tank, please. Let's have a bath. Wounds have been healed. Oh, it heals the wounds of everybody. Nice. What is it? I don't have I to do you. it one at a time. That's cool. Because I now have my Demolitions character, I think this has worked out for the best. Now we can head back in here. And I can open these bad boys, so I don't... Ah, oh, I already have Sonic Mines. Nice. So this character already has mines, so let's pop this bad boy open. I'll just leave this right here. And we'll be able to recover. What? Okay. Literally thought my character was about to just walk right into it then. <laughs> uh, med pack and a upgrade. I should be able to recover those mines. And then I'll have enough to open those those two doors. But yeah, I love that like like I said, like when we first came across this character in his cell. We obviously just straight up were like, oh, he's definitely going to be a character. He doesn't look like an NPC. He's got far too of a unique design about him. All right, here we go. Let's recover these mines. Nice. Well done. Well done. Now we can blow open these damaged doors before we leave and make sure we actually get what's behind them. Didn't want to leave without figuring that out. So it actually makes me wonder if we're going to end up leaving the... We should be able to get to the Ebon Hawk, but I think we're heading to the... Almost heading to the Republic Cruiser first through the fuel line and then we'll get T3 on the way. That's such a shame about HK, how he didn't end up being a party member, a teammate, or or anything. It's just funny how that works. There's the hidden compartment. Two frag grenades, blast pistol, iron grenade, med pack. Nice. And a footlocker. Credits. Okay, now we'll head over into the other room. I'm not sure about this encryption with... Um, with the log terminal though. We haven't been able to figure that one out. I don't know if uh, we were just not skilled enough to get it. Maybe we missed something. Okay, we've got another damaged door over this side. Being able to use mines to blow open doors right is, is really good. I like that as an idea. It's great. Nice. 
Another footlocker, what you got? Components and a repair kit. So it's really the hidden compartment, I think, was the only thing out of those three objects to put a mine on that was worth it. So if we go to this log terminal again, just to check. Quarters hollow log, it's encrypted. Oh, computer skill, decode encryption. So now uh, our lovely friend, I guess, Atten is responsible for being able to just decode it. There you go, quarter log accessed. Uh, private comlink message. What did you want to talk to me about? I have to suit up and drill the 3219K asteroid claim within the hour, so talk quick. I heard you had plans for the Jedi, about selling him to the Exchange. Yeah, but security already set their piece on that, didn't they? Nobody's getting sold to anyone. Are they? I've seen the logs you've been accessing. Maybe the two of us could work something out. It doesn't matter what we work out. We wouldn't make one hyperspace jump before what's left of the Republic was on us. If you have a way off this station, I can cover our tracks. And ensure the Republic is not alerted to our presence. Well, I may know someone. Works this system on special jobs. He may want to know details, but I might be able to arrange transport. I've seen the logs. I know you've already asked him and given the details. Once he agrees, I can handle the rest. Handle the rest? Like how? When the time comes, I'll contact you via comlink. Maintenance out. Since when did the maintenance officer grow some horns? That's because it was HK posing as the maintenance officer. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. Uh, now checking the transmission. Transmission gives the code to open the turbo lift when or if help arrives. Code is a simple group of five numbers. Three, 17, 13. Then the next two numbers are... Ah, uh, okay. That was what that transmission is. Gotcha. Makes sense. That was just us being able to repeat it. There you go. Well, we got to see quarters transmission at least. We've opened up the doors. We've got a party of three now, which is great. Uh, looks like what we're doing now in regards to the journal is uh, we need to head through the, the fuel line. Rescue uh, T3. Uh, but there we go. You've discovered that the protocol droid that stowed away on board the Ebon Hawk was a sophisticated assassin droid called HK-50. HK-52 admitted killing the miners in an attempt to keep you sedated long enough for him to ship you off the station and collect the bounty on your head. He did it by mimicking the maintenance officer's voice and using the fuel depot terminal to issue the command to the medical bay computer to administer the lethal dose of sedatives to the miners. Very, very cool. Uh, so with that one, guys, we're going to bring this episode of Knights of the Old Republic 2 to a close. So thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a great second episode as well, getting further invested into what is happening in this game so far. Uh, next time, I think we're going to have a more of a confrontation with whoever has left that Republic ship and hopefully get out of here. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.